A seemingly insignificant incident at a Colorado school has ignited a powder keg of controversy and sparked a much heated debate between teachers and parents. When a young student came home complaining about being hungry, her mother questioned her. Was she still hungry after eating the lunch she had packed for her? But this mom wasn't prepared for the answer she got. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Lisa Pearson was going about her day as usual, but when her young daughter arrived from school hungry, she knew that something was up. Lisa had sent little Natalie to school with her usual packed lunch, which had come back with her untouched. But when she looked inside Natalie's lunchbox, she was taken aback to find an audacious note inside. Lisa and her daughter lived in Aurora, Colorado. The town is well known for its residents, who display respect, acceptance, and generally treat each other well. Naturally, Lisa was rather surprised that the staff at Aurora's Children Academy would treat her and her daughter like this. No child or parent should have to endure this. They had gone too far. Of course, Lisa only wanted the best for little Natalie. She herself had grown up in a rather competitive society. So, when she enrolled Natalie in Aurora's Children's Academy, she thought she would be giving her daughter the best thought in life. But the dream school quickly became a nightmare. On the stressful morning in question, Lisa had taken Natalie's lunchbox and had done something that the school would see as unforgivable. The Aurora Children's Academy and Child Care Center Preschool can accommodate up to 150 students at any given time and is a very popular choice with the mothers in Aurora. Community members held the school in high regard and trusted the staff there to help young learners prepare for elementary school, which is exactly what Lisa wanted for Natalie. Everything was coming together for Lisa. She was very close to completing her degree and Natalie was adjusting well, making friends and excelling at preschool. It seemed as though things were finally looking up for the family. But little did Lisa know she was about to be jolted out of her dream by a shameful and rude awakening. Natalie had been attending the preschool for almost the entire school year, and Lisa was very happy about her daughter's tuition thus far. She had no grievance and was confident that she and her husband, Nat, had made the right choice by choosing Aurora Children's Academy. But one fateful Friday, all hell broke loose. Natalie said she was always busy, as most mothers of young children are, and completing her degree, working in law enforcement, and taking care of Natalie was no easy feat. She said that she was too busy on one particular day to realize that she had run out of fresh fruit and vegetables for her daughter's packed lunch. But it was this small oversight that would ultimately become a much bigger issue. It was on that fateful morning that Lisa had decided to include a little treat for her daughter, so she threw in a few Oreo cookies and a sweet surprise for Natalie. She also packed a ham and cheese sandwich as well as string cheese to balance her daughter's meal. Normally, she would include a piece of fresh fruit, but she hadn't any in the fridge on that particular day. If you consider how sugar-filled Oreo cookies are, it's no surprise that they are the unhealthiest cookies on the market today. Sweets such as these are notorious for causing diseases such as diabetes, which can also lead to heart disease. The school officials called lunches that included sugary treats poor. Should a little girl be eating them and was the school's concern warranted? That Friday, Natalie arrived home from preschool with a sad expression on her face. Lisa asked what the matter was, and Natalie said that she was hungry. That's when Lisa looked in her daughter's full lunchbox and saw the note on top of the offending cookies, which were uneaten. But when Lisa read the note, she became furious. Lisa knew she needed to share the note with everybody and shame the school for their behavior. The note read, Dear parents, it is very important that all students have a nutritious lunch. This is a public school setting and all children are required to have a fruit, a vegetable and a healthy snack from home, along with a milk. If they have potatoes, the child will also need bread to go along with it. Lisa was obviously furious. How dare the school dictate what her daughter could eat and what she couldn't? The note also stated that Lunchables, chips, fruit snacks and peanut butter are not considered to be a healthy snack. She was so incensed that she decided to share her outrage online. When she posted the note and her summary of the day on social media, Lisa was quickly met with support from other parents and general outrage of the situation. I just got a bunch of outrage from friends I hadn't heard from in years, Lisa said later, noting that one of her friends summed up the incident as ridiculous. 
from the school's point of view, they were saving Natalie. We need to consider that the past 20 years has seen a huge rise in obese children, whereas 30 and 40 years ago, a large person would have stood out and would have been acknowledged. Today, obesity is the norm and is being treated as such. The folks at Aurora Children's Academy probably just wanted to set Natalie on the right track. The Children's Academy was just keeping a watchful eye out. It's no secret that there is an obesity and health problem in America, and the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act came about to encourage healthier lunches for kids in schools. They are not going to allow their students to eat poor lunch. Seeing Natalie open a pail full of carbs and sweets and zero wedgies must have set off a lot of alarms among the staff. We must keep in mind that the Children's Academy is a place where toddlers aim to hire their education. They can't do that with a pail full of Oreos. Studies have shown that healthy food does help children learn more efficiently. Students who eat regular, healthy meals are less likely to be tired, are more attentive in class, and retain more information," said NYU Associate Professor of Economics and Education Policy, Sean Patrick Corcoran. Natalie definitely wasn't eating healthily. No parents want to be made an example of, and no one wants to be accused of poisoning their child with bad food. The school basically went out of their way to make Lisa feel like a bad mother. One can't deny she probably spent nights tossing and turning in bed whilst questioning her own parenting methods. Lisa would later tell the media that her biggest problem with the issue was not that the school wanted students to eat healthy foods, but that the school took it over the top. She said she felt shamed and that it was wrong for the school to say what her daughter could or couldn't eat. Lisa believed that by telling Natalie what she could and couldn't eat out of her lunch, the school had overstepped its boundaries. What the school thinks is healthy for her is not what I think is healthy for her, she said. She needs to eat what she is going to eat. That's between me and her and our doctor, not the school. It would be one thing if Lisa's daughter was 100 pounds and waddling through the class hallways. By all means, at that point, show some concern, but she was otherwise a thin and active little girl. This made the accusation all the worse. Lisa said she was particularly unable to understand the school's response, considering that her daughter is healthy and not overweight. It's not like I was offering cookies to the entire class, and it's not like that was the only thing in her lunch, Lisa said. To add fuel to the fire, Lisa alleges that the school once offered her daughter treats, making their actions hypocritical. They say I can't decide what to feed her, but then they sometimes feed her junk food," Lisa said during an interview with ABC News. After the controversy that ensued, Lisa defended her decision to include Oreo cookies in her daughter's lunch. We are not the parents that send junk food every day, she said later in an interview. She has a full healthy lunch, and this was a Friday, why not give her a special treat? The accusation is a bit strange, especially seeing as schools aren't exactly sporting reputations that associate them with healthy food. The meals that kids usually get in school cafeterias are usually full of mystery. The meats will taste rubbery and everything else will commonly share a disgusting texture. Also, candy is too commonly handed out in class. At the time, Brenda Dean worked as a children's academy's director. She said to the media that she was looking into the note, but that the note was not in accordance with school policy and should have not sent home to a parent in such a manner. If you are picturing this little girl getting her lunch ripped from her grasp and tossed in the trash, you might be getting this story all wrong. Nobody exactly took the girl's lunch and left to starve for the rest of the school. As the plot thickened, the whole truth came out. Aurora Public Schools Chief Communication Officer Patty Moon said that although she did prefer to keep parents informed about healthy choices, such actions should not be punitive. She did however say that Natalie had been given the choice to have another snack and therefore did not have to go home hungry. That means that Natalie took a stubborn stance and refused to eat the meal that was further provided for her. That said, amid over a hundred children eating, she sat there and wouldn't eat anything. She decided that going through the day hungry was better than giving them the satisfaction. When it comes to feud between Lisa and the preschool that her daughter attended, it seems the drama was dropped when Natalie started elementary school. One has to wonder what schools and parents learned from the situation. In the end, the public school system certainly re-evaluated its stance and definitely won't be sending any more notes home to parents. Meanwhile, Natalie moved on to elementary school and hasn't had any other issues. However, the situation definitely shined a light on what role, if any, public schools should have in what kids can and can't eat for lunch.